5 BP Guru. Today we're going to continue on with our capture code uh, by finishing off uh, with the wobble and all the end parts. I realized I also haven't shown you how this will work um, in game. So I thought I'd start off just by grabbing ourselves a Herbadger here. Uh, he is following the player now, by the way, but I've messed his animations up uh, while tweaking another, so I need to replace those. But hopefully in the next episode you'll see him actually following the player properly. But um, all characters will follow. Also, you'll notice as well that um, I need to adjust the um, heights of all my creatures as well, uh, where I've been messing around with animations and stuff. So just bear that in mind. Um, now we're going to start off by attacking here. Uh, my There's a few bugs here you'll notice. Uh, you can see it's where I'm adding in the multiplayer. It's just having some effects uh, in some areas of the game. Um, but I hope to have a lot of this working in the next few days. Now he has been caught. You'll notice that you saw the two numbers turn up top left, which was the, uh, the capture amount and the generated number. And as it came below, it's now been adding to the team, and you can see in the top left, um, under the world composition errors, um, that the Maggie has been added into the team, which is great. So, and that's what we're going to continue on with. So, as you can see, I'm getting a few errors that I need to fix in some of the areas, but that's fine. We will, uh, we will get there. Um, it's all you will find bugs. Don't forget, by the way, guys, you will find bugs as you code. Uh, a lot of mine are stemming from adding in the multiplayer. So you shouldn't have uh, a lot of these errors that I'm getting purely on the sense that um, it's because I'm adding in some slightly different mechanics. And you'll notice that some differences will be in this code as well uh, because um, I've already started to change the capture code to multiplayer as well. So there's going to be a few differences that from what I do compared to what you will need to do. But I will explain those through you for you. So... We're going to come back over to our capture code and we're going to be going back through this wobble that I started talking about in the last episode. Uh, so we got to the end here where we worked out what our remaining wobbles are um, from our calculate wobble. And um, we're going to check to see if remaining wobbles equals zero. That's because uh, it will equivalent to a miss. Now it shouldn't really ever be zero unless you're dealing with Safari Zone or uh, there's obviously a, a clear error in the code. Uh, it's more of a fail safe to ensure that, you know, if we're looking for one to four, um, we don't accidentally um, miss out on zero. Because obviously if there was an error and it calculated zero and we were looking for one, we'll never get a zero. It would create like an infinite, infinite loop error in the game and um, we'd have more serious issues. So it's always good to check something even if that can't be a possibility it's better to check it just in case there was an error and we need a way for the player to get out of the situation so we're checking to see if it's equal to zero now if that's true we can skip the wobbles and we go straight into the capture outcome um if it is now again as i said it should be one to four uh, if it's four it's caught um and if it's one two or three it hasn't been caught but you still need to do the theoretical wobble right the ball roll if you will and this is where that comes into place now mine's set up to be a flash at the moment just changing the creature's color basically uh, for now but eventually that will become an animation or a particle effect um, at least uh, in my game that's what I'm planning uh, for you you'd have uh, an animation of the ball rolling and you'd play that animation the amount of times that you want um, it to play out so again in the sense of one two three or four and if it hits four it's the fourth roll and it's caught so we have a wobble flash here right which is um is here and it's checking to see if it's shiny or not so it's a very similar to the mesh update in the sense that what will happen is we either use the shiny material or not um because we need it to return to that color uh, once it's done and what we're changing those two is flat white material uh, all of them so whether it's shiny because we need to check if it's shiny or not so that we know which material to return it to so we're set check to see if it's shiny if it's shiny we change it to flat white on both and then we go back to the event graph and then we do delay for a second and then we return it back to 
uh, its normal coloring. Again, check and see if it's shiny. If it's true, we do the one shiny color. And if it's not, we do the other shiny color. Now, for the wobble flash, admittedly, I probably could have just done it, set everything to flat white. Um, but I suppose it just keeps the code the same, right? I might actually speed this up a little bit because I think one second's quite long. Uh, so we're going to do 0 0.5 seconds, half a second. And then after we've done that, so we do the flash, we set everything to a white color for now. We delay it by half a second and then we return it back to its original um, shiny color. And to get that, we're just targeting this encounter ringmon variable. If you're, if you're sat there like, where the hell did that come from? It's actually set up on our spawn. So you should have this if you go to your spawn encounter. And it should also happen on your... No, this in this scenario, it actually only matters if it happens on your spawn. Um, but where we spawn our enemy, we set it as a variable. I've just promoted that to a variable. But we do also set that as well for the spawn trainer creature. Uh, where is it? There. Encounter ring mod. We use the same variable for both. So that when we delete them when they're defeated, it's just the same ring mod no matter what the situation. So let's go back into our normal code. But that's where that comes from. Okay, that's what, what I'm trying to get at. Is we're getting that encounter ring mon uh, from that variable from where we spawn the creature in, and then the wobble flash is determined. Uh, it, it changes that creature, that variable. That's what the target is. That's and then when we pull that target through, we get the mesh. Very similar stuff to updating the the mesh we've done before. I'm pretty sure actually that is the same <laughs> the same uh, function node. Actually, I've used the same one. Uh, so there you go. Um, same function node there to get the update mesh. Uh, and when we ride in the ringmon basic information structure from here, uh, that's so we can get whether it's shiny or not, and it's uh, accompanying accompanying materials to go with. Now we need to minus off one of the remaining wobbles. So we take the remaining wobbles, minus off one, and then we set the remaining wobbles. After that, we check to see if remaining wobbles is equal to zero. If it's true, we can proceed. And if it's false, uh, we do nothing. Um, and we check to see if proceed is true. If it is, um, we go into our capture outcome. If it's false, we go, we do a second delay and we come back into wobble flash uh, and we do it again. Now I'm also going to set this back to 0 0.5 as well. So it just speeds the process up a little bit. I don't want that ball wobble to last too long uh, or the, the flash at least to last too long. I want it to be a pretty quick process. Otherwise you're sat there waiting um, and you never know if you're going to catch something or not. It takes a very long time. So, yeah, so just to recap, we're setting proceed to false. Now, this is the same variable I'm using in the multi-hit uh, because because they're being used under different circumstances uh, and not they won't ever link together, I can use the same variable. Um, so, again, we calculate our remaining wobbles. We check if it's zero. If it is uh, zero, we can just go straight into the capture outcome. If it's false and they are higher than zero, we set proceed to uh, to false. We do our wobble flash. We do a delay for 0.5 seconds. We return it back to its original um, uh, colors or uh, materials. We then minus one of the remaining wobbles off and reset that as the new remaining wobbles. And we check that remaining wobbles if it's zero. If it is zero, we can proceed. If it's not, we don't change anything. And we just check that proceed variable to make sure it's still false or if it's true. If it's true, we go into capture outcome. And if it's false, we go into our 0 0.5 second delay and back into the wobble flash. Now we create a new custom event, which you should obviously already know that. And it's called capture outcome, which is what we're calling at the end here. We are checking to see if it is caught, which is determined when or way back in the check capture, I believe. Yeah, that's when we determine if it's caught or not. We're doing that at the end here. Um, and if it's true, we've obviously got a bunch of stuff we need to do, but if it's false, it's very easy. We set our P first variable to true to sell, to tell the system that our player went first and then we roll our enemy turn that way. When we do that and we do our enemy turn and it goes all the way through this, we can check to see if that P first if we went first, which was would have been our attempted capture, uh, and then we can end the turn. 
but if it's false we all do the player turn and we don't want to attack as well so we just want to have the enemy attack so that's why we set that p first to true and then we run the enemy turn now this is where it might be slightly different for you you're probably already noticing something here that you you guys don't have but bear with me and i will explain what you guys need to do in compared to me and my multiplayer game so we have our camera switch we're checking we're looking at the enemy we're making sure that's true we update our dex entry uh, and we're updating it to captured has been caught so we get our third person character current ringmon get the base information we get that name that index number we get update our we, we off that's the function we get our third person character we get its trainer information and we break it so that we get that trainer info ring dex and we run that through a for each loop and we're checking that against the index and when we find that index because it's already been added as a scene ringmon so we just need to find the the scene one if it's true it is in there which it should be because it's already been added when we see the creature we get the index we set the array element of our info ring index we add that index into it and we set the we set it this information so the item we make it we add the ring index uh, the index the ring mon's name and it's been caught has got to be set to true and that's how we're setting that array and uh, element and that will get added to your pokedex or your ring index or your creature index whatever you're going to call it gets added in that way back on the event graph we then need to calculate caught xp um the reason we're doing this is because i found that if you don't do this uh your creature's first level will always only need zero xp to level it up and that means um that means that when you do that uh it will instantly level up no matter who you face you could face a level two caterpie uh, it'll give you like 10 XP and that thing will level up no matter what. So you need to make sure you run uh, the capture, the, the, this is uh, the, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. You need to run this for the creature you've just caught. So we take the current ring one we're looking at. We break all its, uh, we break its build strut. We break its, we break its basic information. Uh, we also are setting that current ring one. We're, so we'll make a ring mon build and we are taking its current level we're doing our four times level times level times level divided uh by five and then we add that into its new max xp and then we set that current ring mon. we've done it before we do it every time we level up so it's just the same thing but we're doing this for the current ring mon because we know it's going to be added into our team we then need to check for an open slot now this looks very complicated but what we're doing is we're getting uh every single slot so let's do one slot together and then the rest should be just copied for slot two slot three slot four so what we're doing is first things first is the slot set if it's true we check the next slot is that slot set uh and then we check the next one is that slot set set and then is that slot set for example and we're doing that until we find an open slot and if it's all true eventually we will add this into our stored ringmon uh, setup but for now we are only going to be able to capture up to six if it is true it'll do nothing it won't add anything it'll just end the level there okay so to go through this we'll go through the one as i said so uh we get our we check to see if slot one is set if it's true we move up uh if it's false we have to set our ringmon party with this new creature in, in it so for example slot two three four five and six won't change so you can plug them straight into a make however we need to add our current ring mon into slot one so we make the slot we set the party slot at the, as the correct index we have to make sure for example when we're setting slot two for example we set that as one slot three gets set at two slot four gets set as three etc all the way through because our slots sit from zero to five we also need to make sure we are setting it as slot set but all the other information gets plugged in exactly as it is so 
Once we've done that, we then set the Ringmon party, and that creature will now be added into the team. Uh, and it goes all the way, same thing happens all the way, just make sure you're plugging them into the correct slots. But this is all just setting the party slot. Once we have six creatures, of course, as I said, we will set this as team full or something like that. And then we will do a branch check to see if the team is full. And then we will have a next function that will run through every available storage slot until it finds an empty space. Uh, and if there's no empty space, um, the, we will have a condition that the Pokemon just breaks free. But again, you should have 20 storage slots, so there's always enough room, so you shouldn't ever have, have that issue, hopefully. Uh, but we will put a failsafe in there that explains that uh, there was no room for the, the creature, and you've had to let it go, or something along those lines. So let's go back into the event graph. We then destroy the actor of our encounter ring mom, uh, just like we do when it dies, etc. So that um, it's not in the scene anymore. We do a two second delay just to, to kind of uh, show the end of the level, but I think that's probably too long. A second, probably 1.25 or something like that is probably better. We get the player controller, we set the game mode back to uh, nothing, show the mouse cursor to, to blank. Now this is where things will change for you guys. So, ignoring this for a moment, um, what you guys need to do is actually just do your encounter save, um, or your user save, party save, whatever you want to call it, and then just open up the, the Cornwallington level. That's what you need to do. Um, so, you need to get your party save information to save player location and things like that, push that back through. You also need to save your ring mom party um, and all the other good stuff, has Pokemon, all those sort of things. You need to do your usual saving of data um, because you're, and then open your level, your your main level. For multiplayer, all of mine's happening in one world now, so I don't need it, that's all I need. But that's not what you guys should do. Do not copy this. What you need to copy is the usual saving method. I will try and find, I don't have it in here anymore, it's all, it's all been removed, but um, you need to just, trust me and save your game uh, so that it passes all the information, all this new updated information back through the game instance and the save file and in back into the overworld. That's what you guys need to do. Hopefully you found this useful um, and hopefully you're getting everything caught as it should be. Uh, if you're not, join the Discord, give me a shout and I'll be more than happy to help you through any of the code. I tend not to see a lot more of the YouTube comments anymore because most people come into the Discord to ask me questions and I spend a lot more time in there helping people than I do in the YouTube comments. As much as I appreciate the comments because they do help the channel, if you need help, please join the Discord and just ask the question in the help section. I'd be more than happy to help you guys. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do and you can always change your mind down the line. And as always, thank you so much everyone for helping the channel grow. We're on 1.65 thousand subscribers now which is insane um and it's and i appreciate every single one of you for for doing that and i will see you in the next episode thank you so much guys take care much love bye